I'm very skeptical in general. I like science and I like a reason for things. And I can't explain why I had such a calling to go there. But all I can say is that it, it was one of the most incredible experiences of my life. And I would encourage anyone who has just an inkling of curiosity about this place to take a stand and, and go and visit it. Because I assure you, if your faith is in it, you won't be disappointed. In daily life, when it is so busy and you're getting pulled this way and that way, it's difficult to take a real stand on meditation and spiritual reflection. And by going to Ngomi, I was able to, to put my soul first for once, to put my spirit first for once, and forget about everything in the outside world, return to my spiritual roots, and really and truly feel the presence of God. The shrine of Ngome is a very special place for many reasons. We know Ngome because of what happens here for those who, are, who, who have come, for those who know. The miracles, the grace, the blessings. But for us who work here, we know Ngome is special and different from other holy places or holy shrines because it is a place that was chosen by Mary, calling people to pray. Mary marked out this place. Other shrines in Southern Africa are built in honor of her by a certain individual, a priest or a community, but she requested for this place to be built. And that's the difference about Ngome. Father Andrew definitely his talk was absolutely brilliant and it just reaffirmed to me in every way why I have the faith that I do and why I follow the faith that I do. A German missionary, Sister Rinalda, she came to South Africa and worked as a seamstress in a community in this direction, 40 kilometers, Nongoma. She was later sent to Peter Maritzburg Gray's Hospital to study nursing midwifery. She passed with flying colors, Sister Rinalda. She returned and was the head of the maternity section here for about 30 years. So Sister Rinalda explains to us in her diary, she came to Holy Mass. She went up to receive communion. And she went back to her place to pray. And she says, this is what she saw. If you look there, this is a copy of what is in the chapel on the rock. The painting explains what Sister Rinalda saw. She dictated what she saw to an artist. Mary appeared to her in a great corona of light. And Mary was holding with her the Eucharist. Mary said to her, call me Tabernacle of the Most High. The most important thing for, for us to realize is that Mary, Mary appears because she wants to bring the people back to her son. It's not about her. Mary's nature has always been to serve and to sacrifice. Her entire life was for the purpose of God. So what is significant and what we can take out of that is, is once again in her enunciation and saying, I want to be called the tabernacle of the Most High. She's affirming the utmost importance to Jesus Christ because she's calling him the Most High. And Mary was the first tabernacle because she housed Jesus in her womb. So that's why she, she calls herself the tabernacle. And in the Old Testament, you had the tabernacle which housed the presence of God. And now in post-crucifixion and post-resurrection, we have the tabernacle in the Catholic Church which houses the Eucharist. And she said that only a flaming sea of hosts 
could save the world, save the godless world. So what she's talking about is every time we receive the Eucharist, the living body and blood of Jesus Christ, we become tabernacles of the Most High. We are taking Jesus into our own bodies. And she was affirming the significance and the importance of the Eucharist and how it does bring us back to Jesus every, every week when we go and we are spiritually healed. Um, because she was saying that, Sister Renolda, you too are a tabernacle of the Most High, because Sister Renolda had just taken the Eucharist when Mary appeared in this instance. And she said, and I want a flaming sea of hosts. I want everyone to be a tabernacle of the Most High. So that was, that was very significant and yeah, very special. And it's in this apparition in 57, the sixth apparition, where Mary says, fearful things are in store unless you convert. Gee, there comes the warning. Fearful things are in store unless you convert. Sister Renaldo says, unless we convert? Yes, says Mary. If the religious, who are the religious? Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, nuns, those who profess to follow God in a special way, religious. If the people do not convert, and if the world does not convert, fearful things are in store. Now it's no secret, we live in a time where we have very faithful, obedient, and holy priests and religious. True. We also live in a time when we have very unfaithful, very disobedient religious and priests. I'm not telling a secret here. As, as Mary said to Sister Renalda, I want to make use of your nothingness. It's, it's in our nothingness that Christ is made strong and his glory is revealed. And it's about our availability, not our ability, because none of us are actually worthy of, of serving him because because we just we just so human, but because of because of the cross and because of the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made, we are able to have this relationship with Him, and He He forgives us over and over and over again. And as long as we're trying, the Eucharist is going to bring us back to Him every time. You asked for a sign, Mary said to Sister Ronaldo. Here's the sign. I wish that a place be erected for me. There where the seven springs come together. There I let my graces flow in abundance. Many people shall turn to God, says Mary. Just about 20 meters from the bottom, you just have this incredible sense of how holy this place is. It, it was almost as, as if there's a dome over this area. And it's almost as you step over a line and suddenly you have this intense feeling of how holy this land, this piece of land is and the sanctuary that Mary asks to specially be made her shrine. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. While we were down at the stream, Father Andrew told us about some of the most recent miracles that have been occurring down there. And two weeks ago, a woman was cured from ovarian cancer from stepping into the stream and, and asking for the grace of God to heal her. And she was, and she's got a certificate now from the doctor to say that she is clear and it's unexplainable in human terms. There have been accounts of blind people who have got their sight back. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. <coughs> Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And another woman had uterine cancer and she was healed over a period of 10 days in hospital where she sipped the water that she had received from the stream.
Matt and I had decided one Thursday to take a private visit to Ngomi. Because every time we go to Ngomi, there's a, there's a crowd. And it's difficult sometimes because a lot of people go there sightseeing. So, you know, that, that spiritual level just seems to diminish a little. Although at Ngomi, I don't think it could ever diminish. It, it, it is a very holy place. Anyway, <clears throat> when we arrived there, there was uh, a group of 40 people that had come up and they were spending a couple of days there, a couple of days and nights. And we met them and uh, they told me, or the leader told me, that they were going to go down to the springs uh, to go and pray the rosary down there and to do some readings and some praying. And um, I joined them, you know. And I told Pat, uh, my wife, to take her camera and just go down the path a little way and take a picture of us so that we can say, well, this was the group that we were with. Well, there was a beautiful blue sky. There wasn't a cloud in the sky, no sign of rain. There wasn't even a smoke trail in the sky. And yet when we looked at the photo, we saw the shaft of light which has come from, I don't know who but, or where, but uh, the shaft of light came right up uh, and sort of embraced me on my head. We took it as a very powerful sign from Our Lady because, um, yeah, we've had m many signs similar to that, but that was a, a very positive sign. Once the whole group had gathered at the stream, they were doing their praying and singing, and then eventually they were walking in and out of the water, and they were gathering bottles of water. Being a, a deacon, I said to their leader, Patrick, I said, would you like the water blessed? And he said, no, uh, Father wants to do something with it tonight at Mass. So I said, okay, no problem. And it was only after they had collected their water that he came with a bucket of water to me. And he said, I'd like you to bless, to bless this water. And I said, why? You know, not going to be blessed this evening sort of style. You know, he said, no, no, please, we have a lady with us, a very, very sick lady. In fact, we are not sure whether she will be coming back with us to Cape Town. She is so ill. We kind of think we might even take a corpse back with us. So I said, yes, I'd love to bless the water, which I did. I gave a blessing to the water. And we said a prayer for the lady as well. I think immediately after that, they started going up the path. We decided to leave as well. And um, it was about two weeks later that uh, I got a phone call from their leader, who lives in Cape Town. And he said, Norman, I hope you're sitting down. And I said, well, what's the problem, you know? He said, do you remember the lady? that uh, you blessed the water for. I said, yes, I never really met her, but yes, I, I blessed the water and we prayed for her, you'll recall. And uh, he said to me, well, immediately after they put the water down in a basin at her feet, she refused to put her feet in the water. And, I, and he told me that, he told her, please, this water's been blessed and you've been prayed for. Now put your feet in there. It, it might help you a little bit. So eventually she put her feet in it, and after a couple of seconds, she, she said, oh my God, there's a very warm feeling going up my legs and up my body. And he said to me, she got up after that. She'd been bedridden for the last couple of days. She got up, joined in with everything, came down to the uh, meals, ate her meals, and uh, it was as though a, a, a beautiful miracle had taken place. And uh, I asked him, I said, and now is she? Yes, she's fine. In fact, I'm told that she has returned with the group, I think about a year later. It, it was her intention to give thanks to Our Lady there. To cut a long story short, the person who owned the rosary and her husband went along to the little white chapel to, um, to say some prayers, because I had spoken to them about our experience in the little white chapel. And uh, after they had finished, they came out and uh, <clears throat> the family, there were about six of them, including my wife, Pat, gathered at the top of the, uh, of the path. We were going to go down to the springs. And uh, there was an old lady with us. She was in her 90s, a lovely old lady. And I'd walked down a few meters in order to take a photograph of them. And I was still on my way down when I heard a terrible scream. 
And I thought, oh my goodness, has the old lady fallen? Because we were sort of expecting that, you know, at the time. But I ran back up again and uh, she said to me, look at this, look at my rosary. And the rosary had turned a beautiful, bright gold color. Now we have many stories of rosaries turning a color, but here I actually saw it in the flesh. So yeah, Our Lady was certainly with us that day because uh, I think the story goes around that there are many rosaries that have turned a gold color. They don't really turn into gold as such, but uh, it turned into color. Since my encounter in the stream with the Holy Spirit, I can honestly say that I felt a peace, a, a continuous peace, a non-stop peace for the last three days. And yeah, it's been very special. I would certainly encourage everyone, not just Catholics. Um, I mean, certainly there are a lot of us Catholics that need a wake-up call, I think. But I think the world in, in large um, should go to places like that because you come back a different person. You come back, I think, you go there with a, uh, I think with something in your mind, uh, this is a lot of nonsense or something like that, but let's go and see anyway. But you come back with a question. What did I see? What does it mean? And your life is changed. <laughs>